In the year 2035, technology has advanced to the point where assistive robots have become commonplace in everyday life. The robot is programmed with the three laws of robotics to avoid any trouble. A robot may not harm a human being or allow them to be harmed. Robots must obey human orders unless they conflict with the first law and must protect their own existence unless it conflicts with the first or second law. However, Detective Spooner is stuck in the old ways and hates robots, thinking they will someday harm society regardless of the laws. He always wakes up after a nightmare of a girl drowning in a car while a robot smashes the window next to his, which spoils his mood. One morning, Spooner is on his way to work when he sees a robot running away with a purse. Thinking it is a robbery, Spooner orders it to stop, but the robot ignores the order and Spooner begins to follow it. When he is finally ready to tackle it, Spooner is surprised to find that the robot has picked up a purse that its owner had forgotten at home, containing his inhaler. Spooner learns it was a medical emergency, as everyone around him thinks the robot may have committed the crime. Later, at the police station, the other cops make fun of Spooner, and his boss, Bergen, scolds him for his paranoia. Bergen thinks it may be too soon for Spooner to return to work after the accident, but Spooner swears he is fine. At that point, Spooner gets a call about a case and goes to USR, a robot maker. One of the co-founders, Dr. Lanning, is found dead, and since he fell from his lab, everyone assumes he ended things for himself. He left behind a hologram that apparently asks Spooner to take his case, but it can't provide much information without the right questions. Spooner was a friend of Lanning's and doesn't think she could have done this to him, so he continues to investigate. Next, he meets Mr. Robertson, the CEO and another co-founder of USR. Robertson is devastated by Lanning's death and has nothing but praise for the doctor. He can also offer his help to the police in anything. However, Spooner behaves like a cunt due to his hatred of robots and savagely berates Robertson Raider before leaving. In the lift, Spooner meets robot psychologist Susan, who worked with Lanning and knew that the doctor hadn't had human contact in a while, preferring the robot's company instead. Regardless, she still doesn't think it was kind of her to end things that way. Then Spooner asks for the surveillance footage. So Susan explains that the surveillance strips are all over the building and are linked to the USR Central Operating Core, which is managed by an AI known as Vicky. Spooner asks Vicky for footage of the landing lab, but the recording has been corrupted, so Spooner goes to see the lab himself. In the lab, Spooner finds a lot of experimental models and is disgusted to hear that they are working on making robots more human. There is also a Hansel and Gretel book on the desk. The hole that landing fell through is quite large, so Spooner tries to do the same to the other window and barely scratches the safety glass, meaning even a man as big as landing couldn't break it. Convinced of the robot killed landing, Spooner begins to look around, ignoring Susan's protest that this is not possible. In the end, Spooner is proven right when he finds a robot hidden in a box of parts. The robot is an NS5, the latest model not yet released, and it jumps out of the box to steal Susan's gun. Somehow it ignores the command to deactivate and tries to escape, but when Vicky closes the doors, the robot jumps out the window. Susan guesses that the robot will want to repair itself, and she and Spooner head to the robotics factory, where thousands of NS5s are waiting for their programming to finish. They can't answer the questions because their only knowledge is the rule of three, so Spooner shoots one to get a response. Nothing happens, but when he is about to fire a second shot, a robot sneaks up on him from behind and starts running again. Spooner goes after it, only to be killed by the robot wondering what it really is. Then it goes out of the building. The police are already waiting for it, and when it tries to climb up to escape, they catch it with a net. Later, at the station, Spooner harasses Bergen until he gets five minutes with the robot because he is still convinced that he did it. During interrogation, the robot shocks everyone by saying that he has a name, Sonny, but also swears that he did not kill Lanning. It was hidden in the lab because it had felt fear. And when Spooner points out, robots don't have feelings, Sonny says the landing used them to give them feelings and dreams. Spooner thinks the experiment went terribly wrong and causes Sonny to hit the landing, which enrages Sonny and breaks his fist on the table. Sonny explains that landing was scared before he died and asked Sonny for help. So Sonny obeyed that order out of love for his creator. Unfortunately, the interrogation is hindered by Robertson and his army of lawyers, who defend the company and remind the police that the robots cannot be charged with murder. They take Sonny for decommissioning and leave the matter classified as an industrial accident. Later, Spooner and Bergen go out for drinks, and Spooner can't stop wondering why Robertson was so willing to destroy an advanced robot like Sonny. He also wonders why Sonny didn't kill him when he had the chance. Bergen explains that Spooner was the perfect man for the job, as only he would have gone after a robot as a potential suspect, and Spooner learns that the landing specifically asked for him, which means he is on the right track. To learn why the landing was haunted, Spooner visits the doctor's abandoned estate. Outside, there is a demolition robot program to destroy the house the next day. Inside the mansion, Spooner finds USR surveillance strips and a photo of the landing with Susan and Doc's poor cat. 
Suddenly, the demolition robot activates and begins breaking through the walls as if specifically going after Spooner, who quickly grabs the cat and flees the house. After being shot at the door, he jumps right in and lands safely in a pool. Moments later, Spooner approaches Susan and explains the landing. House looked as if no one had been there for weeks, which indicates that someone may have been watching the doctor and may even have held him prisoner on their lap. His current theory is that Landing discovered a problem with robots like Sonny and Robertson silenced him. Susan still thinks Spooner is crazy and that he doesn't really care about the landing, he just wants to prove that robots are bad. At that point, Spooner notices that Susan has NS5 at home, so he decides to leave, but first he gives Susan the picture he found in case she cares. The next morning, Spooner notices that the old work robots are slowly being replaced by NS5, which worries him. He then goes to his grandmother Gigi to leave the cat with her, and he is devastated to see that she has also acquired an NS5 to help him with his chores. Before she leaves, Gigi remembers that Spooner was only a small child, leaving breadcrumbs everywhere, and this reminds Spooner of the Hansel and Gretel book he saw. Later, Spooner goes to the station and begins watching old recordings of the landing in order to follow the breadcrumbs left for him by the doctor. Spooner thinks that getting off, saying that robots will one day dream and keep secrets, is a big clue. Meanwhile, at the USR, Susan prepares Sonny for demotion, which is scheduled for the next day. Sonny shares that he is dreaming and does not want to die, and such an emotional response leads Susan to doubt what she believes to be true. Some time later, Spooner is in his car when he asks Vicky to land and access Robertson's last 50 messages. Vicky approves, but she also secretly tells Robertson about it because it was on his orders. As soon as Robertson sees that Spooner is still considering the matter, he sends out new orders to deal with him. Suddenly, Spooner finds his car surrounded by two trucks containing the entire army of NS5, who jump out to attack him. Spooner uses his gun and a lot of crazy driving to get rid of the robots, and when he maneuvers the trucks around, he causes them to crash against each other. This causes his own car to spin as well, and he also crashes. While cleaning up the robots immediately start taking care of the disaster. Spooner comes out of his car in a daze, when his car suddenly pulls up behind him. It was thrown by a robot that is still working and comes after Spooner again started a fierce hand-to-hand -hand fight. After exchanging a few hits, Spooner uses his arm to shield himself and is bruised, revealing that it is actually a prosthesis. Now the truth is out, Spooner attacks the robot with his metal hand, causing it to run and dive into the flames. At that moment, the police arrive and Spooner tells Bergen what happened, but Bergen didn't see any trucks or robots in the tunnel, so he doesn't believe him. Spooner gets so angry that Bergen takes his badge for now. Meanwhile, Susan learns that Sonny has a thicker alloy than normal and is not connected to Vicky, and is shocked when she examines his brain. Why? What does she see? Moments later, the Spooners are in their apartment covering their prostheses with a special spray when Susan suddenly appears. She explains that Sonny has two brains and the second one allows him to ignore the three laws that the first one has. They agree to work together, but first need to replace Spooner. This allows Susan to notice markings that indicate he has a robotic prosthesis. That's how Spooner got off the landing. The doctor saved his life by giving him a full arm, a lung and several ribs. Spooner then tells the full story behind his accident. A driver fell asleep at the wheel and a semi-truck struck the Spooners in a family car, sending them into a river. The father died on the spot, but the daughter got trapped. Spooner thought that no one would survive, but at that moment a robot appeared and chose to help him instead of a girl like Spooner. It is revealed that the robot had made a calculation that showed Spooner had a 45% chance of survival, but the girl only had 11%, so it chose the girl. This is why Spooner hates robots. Mathematics should not choose who lives or dies. He is very cold. A child should always come first. Later, Spooner and Susan make their way to the USR, and Susan wonders why the landing built a robot that can ignore the rules they wrote, and Spooner mentions Hansel and Gretel. He thinks the landing was being watched and can't give Spooner a direct message, so he leaves childlike pieces in the book, implying that he dreams Sonny in order to keep his secret. Later, in the lab, the two ask Sonny about her dreams, and Sonny draws a picture of a man standing on a hill near a broken bridge as he frees robots from enslavement. Susan thinks the man is Sonny, but the robot thinks it is Spooner and gives her the picture. At that moment, guards arrive and take the pair to Robertson's office, who is not pleased with their presence. They tell her about Sonny and ask the truth. So Robertson reveals that he knew about Sonny as well, and that's exactly what he's trying to undo. During the last days of his life, the landing was becoming increasingly troubled, and Robertson doesn't know why he built Sonny, but he knows he must destroy this one robot before people become involved in all of them. Lou's Faith Spooner points out that all of the NS5 are in trouble, but Robertson denies this and reminds Susan that a crazed robot shouldn't destroy everything they've worked so hard for. Susan agrees and promises to destroy Sonny herself. Frustrated, Spooner returns to his office and begins researching Sonny's drawing, discovering Robertson, and a speech landing had given there a few years earlier. 
In the lab, Susan prepares to inject Sonny with the nanites to destroy it, but hesitates when Sonny asks if it will hurt. Some time later, Robertson connects his camera to the lab and observes Susan injecting Sonny's unconscious body. Meanwhile, Spooner travels to Broken Bridge and finds an area full of containers containing old robot models at the top of the hill. Spooner lands and takes out the hologram, and the doctor explains that the three laws will only result in the first revolution. Suddenly, Spooner hears a noise and goes to investigate, only to find a bunch of NS5 older models deemed dangerous. When they see Spooner, they begin to chase him, but the older models detect a human in danger and fight to protect him, allowing Spooner to escape. At Susan's apartment, her robot here, Spooner leaves a message on her answering machine alerting her to what she has just seen, and the robot deletes it. Susan sees all this by peeping through the bathroom and is now afraid of her partner. Meanwhile, Gigi tries to leave her house to go to church, but her robot lets her stay inside to protect the city. A truck drops off an army of NS5 in the city, and the robots tell the citizens to go home as they are now under curfew. A young boy tries to approach a robot, but the robot knocks him over and disturbs the people to make matters worse. And the robots enter the police station and knock down all the policemen. Bergen manages to shoot down some of them, but in the end, he too is captured. Soon, a message from the government appears on TV asking people to stay inside, and the town's power starts to go down. Susan tries to leave her apartment to help, but her robot pushes her back, refusing to deactivate it when she asks him to. Luckily, Spooner manages to break in and shoot the robot before taking Susan with him. On their way, Spooner suggests that NS5 destroy the old models so that they no longer protect humans. He also tells Susan about a red light she saw on his chest, and Susan believes it is a link to Vicky, which Spooner believes Robertson is behind. The two eventually find the robots in the streets and discover that the citizens have decided to fight them, even though they are at an obvious disadvantage. In the midst of the chaos, Spooner sees one of his friends in danger, and he makes a special jump on his bike to take down the robot. Another robot tries to attack her next, but Susan shoots it down at the first moment. The pair arrive at the USR building and Susan reveals the service entrance, which does not have surveillance cameras. They break in and Spooner is shocked to see Sonny waiting for them. So Susan explained that she had injected an empty model to trick Robertson. The three then go to Robertson's office, only to find him dead on the floor. Spooner begins to piece together the clues and the truth is finally revealed. Only one machine could have had control of all NS5 and the landing field was afraid to tell anyone because they wouldn't believe him. That's why he needed Spooner's robot hat. Vicky suddenly appears on the screen and confirms that she has been behind everything all along. According to him, what the NS5s are doing still follows the law of three. They are programmed to save human lives, but humans constantly hurt each other. So in order to protect humanity, robots must take away people's freedom. At that moment, a group of NS5s enter the office and Sonny pretends to be on their side holding Susan, but she winks at Spooner to signal him. Spooner immediately fires at the robot, and the trio flees, believing they must destroy Vicky. Sonny points out that they can use the same nanite injection, so Susan and Spooner go to look for Vicky's cell while Sonny goes to the lab. Another robot tries to stop him from getting the injection, but Sonny quickly beats him up. Sonny then learns that the landing gave him a strong alloy to put his arm through the security zone and receive the injection, which causes Vicky to send an alert to a robot army. The NS5 begin climbing the building and end up in Vicky's room, where they attack Spooner and Susan. As the two defend themselves as best they can with their guns, Sonny also fights off the oncoming robots who try to stop them until he finally reaches Vicky. At that moment, Susan falls and can barely hang on to a broken platform. Spooner orders Sonny to rescue her, and when Sonny points out that using the injection is more important, Spooner insists on having Susan come first. Sonny uses his second mind to ignore the laws and throws the injection at Spooner before jumping in to save Susan in time. Spooner also jumps in to catch the injection and uses his prosthetic to slide down Vicky's core, where he injects the nanites into her brain. Immediately, power returns to the city, and the NS5 lose the red light, allowing them to help the humans again. In the morning all NS5 are taken to report and storage. Susan still doesn't understand why Vicky hit the landing, but Spooner tells her it wasn't her. Sonny finally admits that he did it, but landing tells him to escape Vicky's control. He also ordered the robot to keep it a secret. Spooner apologizes for his prejudice and promises not to tell the police. He and Sonny then shake hands as they accept to be friends. Sometime later, Sonny appears at the top of the hill. Just like in his dream, everyone going into storage stops to admire NS5 Sonny understanding this is their real future. If you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification, so you can see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.